What is up, everybody on YouTube? Driscoll over here, and we already got one comment in the house. What is up, John E? But right now we are live, and I was just watching the Rockstar Flippers live, and it's like, you know what? I'm going to go live because I did not record a video today to put up and figured now would be a good time for me to answer all of your questions. We've been growing this channel. We've been getting more people popping on here. I have been uploading daily, getting lots of content out there for you guys, going inside the thrift stores, buying stuff at Goodwill, selling it on Amazon, selling it on eBay. You can see inventory behind me like crazy. We got so much stuff, so much going on for fourth quarter. So I figured we would do a Q&A for people that um, I, I try to answer every question I can on my comments down below. I do my best with that. It is hard to uh, answer every single one though. Uh, when you got a video coming out each day, you got to go back and answer all the questions. So without further ado guys, it's been about a minute and I haven't answered any questions. So I'd like to see some questions while we got about 35 people in the house. What is up everybody? Uh, Traps Studios asks if I have a Twitch account. Yes, I do. Oh man, I can't remember the name to it though. Uh, I'll put that in the uh, comments later because I do stream on another YouTube channel. All right, so let the comments flow. If you guys have any questions, here we go. Zach OTT says, I'm a new seller on eBay and want to move to Amazon. Should I start as an individual or a professional? Okay, so in I, I think you're talking about trying to get a professional uh, seller account on Amazon. If you plan on selling, I believe it's more than 30 items a month, pay the $30 because they're going to charge you a dollar fee per item on Amazon without that professional account. So if you're selling 31 items, you've already made it worth it. So if you plan on selling more than 30 items a month, pay that $30 a month to Amazon so you're not paying the dollar fee for anything over. It's a no-brainer right there. Uh, Taylor Baker says, what do I think about Funko Pop? So I wanted to make a whole video on this, but I have to do more research. I've done some research on Funko Pops, mm -hmm. guys. You can buy and sell Funko Pops, obviously. They're these little toys, and I've just been noticing some values going up like crazy on these things. Uh, perfect example, guys, if you want to go over to eBay or Amazon right now, type in Supernatural Funko Pop. You'll start seeing that the prices of these for the Castiel, the Dean, these are characters on the TV show, they're going for $30, $40, $50 when originally they were selling in the store for $8 to $10. So why is that? Well, these get discontinued and people want their favorite characters from their favorite shows. So I actually went to GameStop today and I picked up three Funko Pops that are worth it for me to sell just by going there and scanning every single one they had. Now, doing that wasn't didn't seem worth it because I scanned, you know, maybe a hundred of them, maybe 150, and I only was able to grab three. I'm only going to make about 20 bucks, $15 after all fees. Now, does that sound great? Not really, but now I know which three are worth it. So next time I go into another GameStop or into a Target or into a Walmart, I scan them, grab, grab, grab. Now it's easy. You have to put in the initial work. It may seem like a lot. Um, especially when I do the CD scanning, I get questions all the time. Hey, is it really worth it to sit there and scan 100, 200 CDs? Is that worth it when um, you only came out of there with $5 profit, $10 profit? Maybe not at that moment, but you build this base of knowledge in your head and that's the best for future. You have to put in all that work. And this is why, uh, this is going off on a little tangent, but this is why people say, oh, courses are stupid or paying for help on eBay and Amazon is stupid. Do all the research. It's all free out there. Yeah, it's it's free if you want to sit through hundreds to thousands of hours of video or you pay the money up front. You get all the knowledge you need right away. Obviously, you're, it's always good to learn on your own as well, but there's just that's kind of how all of reselling works. You have to put in the hours, put in the grind. Once you do that once or twice, then you're able to start, you know, growing and building. All right, let's see what else we got going on. Eric Jordan says, what do I do if a seller sends you threatening to shut down for selling their product? I'm selling it used. So I've had that happen before on Amazon and on eBay. Uh, certain companies will tell you, hey, we are going to remove your item. We're going to file a strike on you. This is against the law, whatever they say, right? A lot of times, if it's a fast moving item, um, you, you should still, you know, just remove it. Don't deal with them. It really depends if it's the actual company 
sending you the message or if it's just another random seller. If it's another random seller, ignore him. You don't have to worry about that. He's just being a jerk. Now, if it's the actual company sending you this message, look into it. Make sure it's legit. Take it down because you will get a strike on your Amazon account. Um, with me, I've had it happen before. Items I don't realize. All of a sudden, the company messages me telling me, hey, no one else is allowed to sell this item. Uh, you have to take it down. And it had a really fast rank. The item just sold. I never got to take it down. Really depends on the item. Uh, I would recommend if you get a message from somebody, make sure it's legit from the company before you even go about taking it down or responding to them. All right. Let's see what we got. Greg A., how much do I pay for Amazon shipping and how do you calculate that when buying stuff to resell? So today I did one FBA shipment. It was a box, 28 pounds. It cost me $7 to ship. Now, there weren't a lot of things in the shipment, so the price per item was up a little bit higher, but my shipments go right to New Jersey from Connecticut, so it's a really short way to go. Sometimes they go to Florida, California, Tennessee, all over the place. But when they go to New Jersey, it's very cheap. I've had boxes that are 50, or Pennsylvania, I think, is the one that I went to today. Um, but, you know, you can have a box that's 50 pounds shipped for about $10, $12. And you can have a box that's 10 pounds shipped for about $5, $6. So Amazon is super cheap. If you could get 30 items, I always like to say 30 because of these 30 label sheets. You can see right there it has, uh, actually, you can hardly see it, but peel this off this is what I use for Amazon FBA these little labels that have the barcode on them uh, there's 30 to a sheet so I try to make sure a minimum shipment is around 30 now you could go lower you could go higher but since I use these instead of an individual label printer I like to try and get 30 items in a shipment before I send it out label them all and ship them off you could get your uh, cost of shipping per item down to 50 cents an item or less 25 cents an item so on ebay if you were selling the same item and it weighs you know almost a pound you could ship it first class for about five dollars or on amazon if you put it in a box with a bunch of other items it could cost you 50 cents to ship so people can complain about the higher fees on amazon okay but you're saving the five dollars on shipping so it balances out all right what do we have here? 717 Outdoors asks, if I upgrade to the paid Amazon seller account, do they have any restrictions on storage size for your inventory? Uh, they do, but it's it's extremely high. Um, I, I don't even know what it is. It's so high, I've never even been close to hitting it. I mean, I've had over a thousand items in my inventory on Amazon before, almost 2,000 at its peak. I'm nowhere near that right now. Um, when I was going really hard about a year and a half ago, I had like 15, 1,600 items in my Amazon store at one point, and I was not even close to reaching like even slightly near the uh, cap. So don't even worry about that. Um, Kristen Springer says, my fear on buying during holiday is prices tanking fast. Don't know what to do. So I just posted something about that in my last video, which is hilarious because um, I haven't uh, posted the follow-up. So my previous video, if you watch it on my YouTube channel, me going into a Walmart, I was scanning a bunch of things in there. I found these two toys that were selling for more than they were selling for in the Walmart. But I showed how many new sellers were sending it into Amazon. So this was an issue. Will the price tank? Will Amazon come back in stock? Well, I get home that night. I don't work on the Amazon shipment. I get home, I hang out, I eat dinner, whatever. This morning, I start working on the Amazon shipments. And one of the items, which is this item right here, Amazon already came back in stock. It was selling for about 20. Amazon comes in at 12 in less than 12 hours after I had previously looked. So Christmas time is crazy. Amazon might run back out of stock, but I didn't ship it off. It just wouldn't be worth it right now. I'm just going to keep it. We'll see what happens closer to Christmas. Maybe I'll send it back in. Um, but these are things that you have to worry about with Christmas time. You're going to have a lot of inventory coming in and coming out. You can't really plan for it all. Uh, you just have to expect that items will start moving faster. So hopefully they run out of stock. And quick tip for you guys, um, depending on where you live in the country, um, take this little bit of advice if you're selling on Amazon. Battlefield 5, and this is a great bolo right now, guys. So get your notepads out, even though it only applies for tonight since today's the last day. Battlefield 5 on the PS4 and Xbox One is marked down to $30 at Target right now. You can go pick it up in-store only at your local Target and sell it on Amazon for 60 bucks. So you'll profit about 20 something dollars after fees. 
Not bad, quick, easy flip if you wanna take it at your local Target. Mine was sold out, but one a couple towns away had a whole bunch. I just didn't feel like driving over there today. I was working on FBA shipments and eBay packages and stuff. But quick bolo for you guys. It's only good until tonight. So maybe if you wanna clean out your local store, buy all the Battlefield 5s, you can make yourself a nice profit, a couple hundred bucks if you feel like buying them all. Uh, there you go. All right, let's keep scrolling. Let's see what we got going on. Yeah, Amazon FBA is very strict right now. I'm actually, oh, quick tip uh, about that Bolo. For some reason, I'm restricted in selling it for the Xbox One, but not the PS4. No idea why. I could sell every other Xbox One game, but not that game. But I could sell that game on PlayStation. I don't know why. Amazon's been really, really weird lately. And I've been having issues pop up left and right. But that's just uh, something... Something we got to go with. On Amazon, I used to do about 90% FPA. Now, because of rising long-term storage fees, you're doing 100% uh, fulfilled by merchant. Virgin. Uh, am I moving more towards fulfilled by merchant? Well, you can see I do have items over there on a little shelf. Those are all my fulfilled by merchant items and some stuff on eBay. And yeah, so I do some things fulfilled by merchant if the sales rank is too high. Because, I mean, these long-term storage fees are a little bit killer. And sometimes I still want to pick things up. All right. Let's see what we got for question. Bobby Hill says, what to do if you sell something you got to act... Huh? A little confused here. What to do if you sell something you got to activate and the buyer says it's already used? Um... Okay, so basically if you sell something and then the buyer says, hey, this is already used, I want to return, nothing you can do. The buyer says it, got to accept the return, they might be lying. I mean, on these platforms, you kind of just have to accept the returns. It is kind of a pain, but you got to do it, can't stress over it. John and Pam, how's it going? I was just talking to you in Rockstar Flippers chat. Always wondered, if items have sold for good money, most resellers say it will sell again. Why? Since the person already bought it, mainly sell clothes. Um, I'm, I'm a little confused about the phrasing there. Uh, I'm very confused about the phrasing. I'm sorry. You're going to have to ask that again. <laughs> uh, Double Shot says, what do I make a month? Getting right to the point. I love that. Uh, so it fluctuates all the time, especially for reselling online, especially for the time of year. I'm going to make more uh, in quarter four than I am in June, right? Uh, less people are buying in June. And, and it also depends on how much I choose to ship in. So uh, this month, I don't even know what I've made. Um, but it fluctuates so much per month. Like there have been some horrible weeks uh, this year alone. There have been some horrible weeks where I made, you know, less than, I don't know, $500, right? Um, probably like, you know, $350, $400. Horrible week, right? That could be one time this year. And then this time of year in one week i could make you know two thousand dollars it's insane right so it could go from you know less than 400 less than 300 less than 200 it all depends to more than 2000 more than 3000 last year i remember having multiple thousand dollar days in a row and those are just days so it really fluctuates so much it is impossible for me to answer that right now at this moment i'm sorry uh okay hans news all right uh Adam Gallego says, what's one of the best things you've found that you've kept for myself? Um, what have I kept for myself? Um, I don't have any, I'm using, well, I'm live streaming on my phone right now, but I have a webcam that I found that I use for a lot of my, um, what sold videos. So I found that at a thrift store. I keep it for myself. I can't think of really anything right now for some weird reason. I find so many things at the thrift store that I keep for myself, mainly clothes, video games, um, I don't know. I, I really can't think of it, but I found lots of stuff that I keep for myself. It's mostly clothing, um, sporting equipment, just fun toys, video games, things like that. All right. TJ Kanda, this is a loaded question. What is the best way to start FBA? There are so many YouTube videos based on that. I highly recommend checking there. It would be impossible for me to explain how to get started. The best way to get started is to just jump right into it. Just hop right into Amazon. Uh, that's how I did it. I bought a bunch of stuff to sell online. I watched a YouTube video on how to package up an FBA shipment. And I did it that way. And it worked. So I just followed along. Uh, let's see what we got going on. 
All right, Rake and Profit in the house with the two dollar super chat saying, "My dog, I am a dog." Um, yep, I'm a dog wearing a dolphin shirt. I'm multi animal, bi animal, bi animal, bilingual. Uh, thank you, dude. What's up? What's up? Uh, Petasan says, "Do I have any good FBA inventory? Uh, do you have a good FBA inventory storage limit?" Uh, no, no. I mean, just set, keep sending stuff in. Don't worry. If it's not selling, get it sent back to you. Troy Garcia says, hey, man, when am I coming back to Orlando? Uh, dude, yeah, uh, who knows, man. I'd love to, though. Do I use replens at all for your business on FBA or eBay? So, no, I don't have any replens. Like, I don't have a certain SKU that I keep buying to sell. I really wish I did. I should really have a couple of them. I don't. Uh, I find that prices change so much that it's almost impossible to have a replen nowadays because of how many people are doing this. But I do have certain products that I gravitate towards and certain brands like these Funko Pops that I'm learning about. Now, I once I do all the research in one one day, scanning a whole bunch of them, then I could hit up you know each GameStop, Walmart, Walgreens, Target, um, all these different stores. Each time I hit one up, I know to go look in that aisle for this specific toy. And that's kind of how I do it. And the price is usually only good for a couple days uh, to, to a couple weeks before prices fluctuate so much. So that's kind of how I do it. And when I find the items, I go hard. I go to like 15 different stores, buy them all, and then I chill. That's kind of how I do it. But I would love to go back to Orlando. I really liked it down there. It was nice. It's a lot colder up here. Uh, Hope Margrave says, how do I do with everything you do with Amazon? I'm seriously thinking about selling on Amazon. Yeah, it's like I said earlier, it's near impossible for me to explain the whole thing. So many YouTube videos on it. I probably have some YouTube videos on it. I have like hundreds of YouTube videos. So I would recommend, uh, just typing in on, uh, YouTube, how to start Amazon FBA, how to start a shipment, blah, 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 things like that. And people will walk you through amazingly. I love it. Uh, the person I learned from, the video I learned from, I mean, it's changed because this was three, four years ago, was Planet Alyssa, her YouTube channel. I don't even know if she uploads anymore. I think she still does. But that's the video I watched, and I've shouted that video out a million times because it helped me out so much. Uh, do South Candle Company. Do I, Did you know you can sell on Amazon under the Prime template and ship it yourself? Yes, I do know that. I don't do that, but I do know you can do that because me personally, when something sells... Even on eBay, I give myself a three-day handling time, and maybe that hurts my sales, but that's better than me being stressed out all the time to get these shipments out like crazy. I'd rather, you know, not be super stressed. I'd rather just get the items out when I get them out. All right, Nick K, do I sell less pre-owned clothes on eBay this time of year? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I just sold a shirt today. It was brand new, though. Um, that was only 22 bucks. I was an Under Armour polo, brand new. Sold it for 22 on eBay. I'm trying to think what else. I pre-owned, I really haven't been selling that much. I sold a, a polo uh, vest uh, two days ago, so I really haven't been selling that much on eBay clothing-wise. It's been kind of slow. And I'm ha I have a 33% off sale in my store, so if you guys want to check out my store, see if there's anything you like. There's a lot of cheap stuff. I think there's Tommy Bahama in there for $10.00. And, and I just got so much cheap stuff in my store just to get rid of because it's not moving this time of year. And I just want to get rid of it, even if I'm breaking even on it. I mean, I probably spent $5 on a shirt. If I sell it for 10 and after fees and shipping, I'm probably making less, maybe a dollar or less, maybe 25 cents. But I'm just happy to get rid of it and get my money back that I paid for it. All right. Uh, Hope Margaret says, what about the green room? Is it worth paying money on what education? Is it really worth it? So I always say this, I'm not part of the green room. I'm not paid of any, um, I'm not part of any, you know, course or any program. Personally, I have paid for a bunch of different courses and programs and coaching services stuff way in the past. Right. And I've actually offered coaching services and I, I haven't made that super public on my YouTube channel, but I have coached a few people, um, on YouTube, on creating a YouTube channel, on creating, uh, Amazon and eBay and how to find items and all this stuff. Right. So I have charged people that have reached out to me and I sit down with them for an hour on Skype and we work through it and we, you know, bang it out that way. Whatever questions they got, they have an hour to ask me everything right and it's better having a one-on-one -on -one like that you, you spend a little bit of money up front and you will make all that money back the very first time you got sourcing so that's how i look at it so i've charged 
for services before, but I, I always say, hey, I have a free YouTube channel. If you want to sit down and watch me go on a, a ride along, maybe you'll learn something. Maybe you won't. It really depends. Or you can pay you know, a little bit of money up front and I can help you out. Same thing with the green room. Um, I can't recommend it myself and I can't not recommend it because I'm not part of it. I don't know what's inside of that group. I know that it is super helpful for people that are new to reselling. I don't know about people that are experienced in reselling, so that's all up to you. I would ask somebody who is personally in the group. Uh, I'm not the person to be asking, I'm sorry. Uh, Daniel Miller says, how much is rent where you live? So I was in an apartment um, three months ago. I just moved to a house. And I was in an apartment three months ago, and it was a two bedroom, one bathroom, first floor apartment for 725 a month, no utilities included. That's in Connecticut, and that is cheap, man. No yard, though. I had no yard. It was right on a main road, a busy road in the middle of a city, sort of. And um, I had a dog, so I'd have to like bring her out to a park around the corner or drive somewhere so I could you know, bring her on walks to go to the bathroom. So that was kind of a pain. Um, and that's 725 it's really hard to find that price around here. The majority of apartments are, you know, for two bedrooms are going for eight to nine hundred. And uh, if you want two bedrooms, I mean, if you want, you know, something really nice, you're gonna want to spend around a thousand. That's just Connecticut, and I'm in a cheap part of Connecticut. Also, there are other parts. I personally would love to live down where I grew up, which is in the Southbury, Woodbury, Roxbury. It's kind of the middle of Connecticut. Um, you can't even find apartments there. It's mostly just houses, but if you do find a one story apartment, second floor, first floor, it's costing about twelve to fifteen hundred dollars a month. I'm personally in a cheap part of Connecticut near the border of Massachusetts. So that is um, that's that. And now Connecticut's gonna have tolls because Connecticut is greedy with money. All right. <laughs> Here we go. John and Pam, most Sellers say to check sold listings on eBay. If the items sell, how is it guaranteed to sell again? So that's true. Uh, so you can check sold listings, and if you only see one sold listing, cool. Maybe it was just one person. But if you see, if you're looking up this game, right, and you see 20 to 30 of them sold, you know, compared to how many are listed, maybe it's a hot item. Same thing goes with clothing. If you look up a brand, um, a perfect brand that I always like to give for an example that not a lot of people know of or knew of was Untuck It. And I'd never heard of it. I saw it in the store. I looked it up. A lot of them were selling compared to the amount listed. And that's what you want to compare. So when you're on eBay and you go to the sold listings, what I personally do, I click completed listings. It'll tell you the amount that pop up at the top. Let's say there's 500 completed. Then you click on sold. If there's 458 sold, that means almost all of the completed listings are sold listings. Now, if you click on completed and see 500, then you click on sold and the sold listings are 120. Then you know there's almost 400 of them that didn't sell. And that's kind of how you start to decide, okay, maybe this isn't a really good seller. It sells for this much, but I'm gonna have to wait a long time. And that's kind of how you want to work with that. Uh, hello, Casey White. I'm glad you caught me live also. Anthony says, should he sell on eBay or Amazon? I recommend starting on both platforms because better things sell better on both platforms. Might as well get into Amazon sooner than later. I would recommend starting on Amazon, honestly, because they keep gating and restricting categories for new sellers. So get into Amazon while you can. Just create an account. Even if you don't start selling on there, create an Amazon account tonight if you haven't you'd be very thankful uh, to start it now. Because what if you want to start it up in six months to a year or even next month and Amazon says, oh no, no more sellers, we're done. Whoever's on our platform is on our platform and that's it. We're not accepting new applicants at the moment. Then you're out of luck. So I'd recommend just signing up at least, but I'd say sell on both. Sell on a bunch of platforms, sell on Mercari, sell locally, sell everywhere you can. Different things sell better everywhere. Uh, Bumble the B20 says, have I tried the Aiden payment on eBay? No, I have not. Uh, I'm totally against change. I'm horrible with change. I still use the classic printing, uh, eBay printing labels on my uh, computer. I like to use the classic version of everything because I'm not a fan of change. So I have not tried Aiden yet. Uh, Chris How Twenty, because if it's not broke, why fix it, right? That's how I, that's how I look at it. Chris How Twenty Two says, "How much per month am I making on eBay and also on Amazon?" So I answered that question earlier. Uh, it's pretty hard to to go into detail with that. 
Uh, Run BD3, why on earth am I a Dolphins fan when you're living in an era where the Patriots are one of the greatest winning runs in history? Um, well, I became a Dolphins fan when they weren't, so there's that. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. What, they started winning in 2001? I was a Dolphins fan in the 90s, so I guess it just kind of stuck. All right, Pam is asking, how is Sophie? Sophie is good. She is in bed, I think, still. She's just been curled up on some blankets because... It's nice, but she'll love the cold. I'll just let her outside, and she'll just go to bed. She'll roll around in the snow and just lay there and pass out on the ice. She's obsessed with it. But I think right now she's laying curled up in the blankets because she is the best dog in the world. All right. Here we go. Casey White. Yeah, I'm trying real, real hard to read these comments as fast as I can. Uh, I would love to know how you started getting YouTube followers recently brought an entire store inventory of collectibles uh, so getting YouTube followers, yeah, so this is a whole thing, consistency is key, and like I said, I ha it's impossible to go into full detail in one video, and uh, I have coached people in it, but that costs money, obviously not everybody wants to pay money, and I would never ask everybody to pay money, but the two things I could say, consistency, upload as often as you can, try and stick to a schedule so people know when to come find you, so me with live streams on YouTube, I'm not consistent. I go live whenever, and we still have a pretty decent turnout. I'm sure if I had a set time, let's say Thursdays at 5 o'clock or Sundays at 2 p.m., I guarantee I would have two, 300 people in the house um, because they would know every Sunday at 2 o'clock he's going to be live. Um, so that would help get more people to always look at your channel so consistency is key, and then just quality content, right? So don't ask for anything. Don't ask people to, to give you stuff. Just keep providing. Keep giving them stuff. So uh, give them bolos. Give them, you know, but don't destroy your own uh, bolo, your own things that you find. But give, you know, bolos. Create quality content. Just make it fun. Don't try and be too serious. Make it fun. Go out thrifting. What do you guys like to watch on YouTube? Emulate it, right? People love uh, Ryan and Rally. Ryan and Alley Roots, Rally Roots. Um, you know why? Because they're fun, they're personable, they go out thrifting. What do I do? I go out thrifting, I bring people into the thrift store, people love those. Same thing with Rockstar Flipper. You bring them in places, show them what you can do, how you can do it, and people love to watch that stuff. If you don't go thrifting a lot and you work from home, that's fine, do the same thing. I've, I'm doing a video right now, sitting in my office. I could do a whole video breaking down what's in these boxes and I bet you it would be an interesting video because I'm sure people are curious what kind of brands are in these boxes what kind of brands haven't been selling for me and which ones move faster so just always try to come up with ideas and uh, that's I guess I gave you three things there so I'll take my money uh, <laughs> and see I'm going real fast going real fast I'm just start answering questions in rapid fire mode because I'm about eight twelve minutes behind on these comments Okay, do I use other platforms to sell on? Yes, I sell on a lot of local platforms. Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp. Uh, thank you, The Truth. All right, all right. Um, Sean Bouchard. Hey, homie, you buy so much from thrift shops and such. Think of how many bags you could save by bringing in your own reusable bags. Uh, be, con be conscious, man. Yeah, so um, I totally get that. But I reuse almost all my bags. Not all of them, but I reuse a lot of them. Um, for our garbages, like our bathroom garbages and the garbage in the basement. And we did used to use them to pick up dog stuff. And uh, now I don't, I just scoop it with a shovel and I throw it <laughs> into the woods. But yeah, so no, I totally agree with that. Uh, John Reese says, Amazon or eBay? I have an eBay store for video game items. It's decent size, but what is better? For video games, Amazon. If it's really old video games, eBay. Uh... Have I gone to the thrift store buzzed, Seymour asks. Um, actually, no. I never, never. Wow. That's something I should do. Maybe I'll make a video on that. I'll need Kristen to drive me, and I'll take shots in the car. It'll be a really, um, I don't know if it'll relate to my audience so much, because my audience is more about learning, but it could be fun. Maybe um, I'll take mad shots and then go to the thrift store, and that sounds horrible, but it would be funny. Um, here we go. Anthony says, what's my eBay or Amazon account so I can buy something off of you? Well, I do not give out my Amazon account, but my eBay account is J-D-U dot, like a period, J-E-S. Look me up, very easy. Um, trying to think of uh, an item that I have 
that's very specific that you can just look up and find me if you can't find me by my name. Uh, I have Pokemon lanyards. If you type in Pokemon Pikachu lanyard, sort by low to high, mine is $5.48. So there's two people selling it. One guy's $5.49. I'm $5.48. Maybe you can find me that way. All right. Uh, Mike Spear, I want to see Jesse and Rakin go on a shopping spree and see who does more in sales. Yeah, dude. I mean, Steve lives uh, about an hour from me. So we go all the time, though. Uh, we do like thrift meetups in Connecticut, which are really fun. I think he's setting up another one in January. Um, Casey White, first month on eBay, I'm at $797 in sales. Awesome, man. I'm so glad to hear that. Or woman, sorry. Uh, we have Soph right here right now. Say hello. Hey. And uh, yeah, so she just joined me. Hey, how's it going? I know you wanted to see me, but I'm in the middle of something. Okay, let's see. What is one of my long-term goals with resale? Yours is to open up a shop one day. Awesome. Yeah, I wanted, I actually thought about opening up a shop before. Definitely not going to do that. That's, uh, especially not in Connecticut. That's just insane. Uh, long-term goal, I mean, I'd just like to have a lot of money. That's pretty much it. I just want a lot of money. I want to be financially free and uh, do things that I want to do. I really like to travel, so I guess traveling would be number one on there. Have enough money to just travel and stay in nice places and do whatever I want at those places that's kind of my goal. Um, you know, I, I like budgeting cause I'm kind of frugal, but I'd like to not budget all the time. Um, but I am pretty cheap. All right. Let's see. I'm scrolling through fast now. How about VCRs? Yep. I flipped the VCRs a bunch of times. Just make sure you have the remote. All right. Let's see. I'm scrolling fast. What are my thoughts on flipping phones? I stay away from it. I bought one phone. It was the worst thing ever. Uh, I bought it, paid a hundred bucks for it, had an issue. I thought I could fix the issue. I couldn't fix the issue, sent it to somebody to fix the issue. They fixed it. And then I realized there was another issue and it was, ju it was just going to cost too much. You want, you have to worry about people being sketchy online when you buy them, um, bricked phones, all these crazy things. So I don't mess with phones, but there is good money to be had there. I just don't personally do it. Uh, what was the best way to calculate the cheapest shipping uh, by weight? If it costs less than a pound cheapest way always is first class mail if it is a book or a cd cheapest way is media mail and if it is something that weighs a lot like over a pound but is small like this priority mail flat rate envelopes there you go um am i gonna fix the pull up yeah uh not now it's freezing out there and actually part of the fence broke down in a huge storm that we had so i have to go by the pool and fix it all up and that sucks so no, I'm I'm not working on it right now. I want to though. I would love to. I want to get that thing working out there. Um, Vintage Discoveries is at 1,800 subscribers in six months. That is awesome. All right. Uh, Colorado Picker just started at Amazon. Where do I find stuff to sell that I am not gated on? Thrift stores and regular stores like uh, WalMarts and Targets. Anywhere really. What is up, Mark Corbett? Uh, did I ever go to the Goodwill bins? Chad Carlton says, yes, I've gone to the bins a lot of times. Not recently. I live kind of far from the bins. So I'm the complete opposite end of the state. Like here's the square. I'm up here, bins down here. So I don't go there very often. Do Guitar Hero bundles sell well on eBay? They sell great on Amazon. I would imagine they sell really good on eBay. I haven't sold them on eBay personally, but yeah, I don't see why not. Yeah, definitely bundle them though. How do I remove price stickers off clear plastic windows? Perfect example. I have an affiliate link down below in my description for Scotty Peelers. I recommend everybody buy one. They're only five to seven dollars. I'll show you exactly what they look like. They are the best. They look like this. They're these little plastic things and I bite my nails horribly. So I need something like this to scrape off the label. Uh, I don't have anything with a label on it right now. Sadly, not in front of me anyways. So, oh my gosh, I really don't. So this works really good. Now, if the label is really stuck on there, get yourself a heat gun, heat it up a little bit, it melts the glue on the back, and this will go right underneath. Scoop it right off. Works beautifully. All right. Um, where do I see myself in five years? Oh, my gosh. I hope I still see myself reselling, to be honest. Who knows where Amazon and eBay are going to be in five years. Amazon was a different place five years ago than it is now, and I hope that it stays good. Who knows if Amazon's still going to be good in five years. I really hope to see myself still doing this, but on a bigger scale. Uh, Casey White, thank you for the $1.99 super chat. Thank you for watching. I love to have you here. You are awesome. Uh, TJ Kanita, thank you for the $2 super chat. 
Killing it, bro. TJ Kanita, great video, man. Thank you. I'm glad. Glad you guys are liking it. Um, do I ever ship on the? Sh do I ever shop on the sh uh, Shop Goodwill website? No, I do not. That place is overpriced. It's crazy, horrible. Don't ever go there. That place is crap. Um, do I have an email address? Yes, I do have an email address. But best way to contact me uh, is through my Instagram. Actually, Thrift School. You'll find me. A lot of people contact me through my Instagram. I never check my emails. I get so many junk emails in there that I just have a hard time going through it all. Um, Instagram, I'm able to look through it every couple days. So if I don't answer right away, I'll answer in a few days usually. Sometimes I just miss them and I forget. If I still close on Poshmark, no, but I've been meaning to try it. Um, here we go. Does it beat down the price of an item when Goodwill puts a mark on a clothing tag or logo? Uh, when they put the mark on the clothing tag or logo, I never worry about it. If you look at most eBay listings, they all have marks because almost all these eBay listings are from people that go to Goodwills and stuff. So I wouldn't recommend with that. Uh, what do I do with very played PS2 games? You have 98 with some good tiles, but they have plenty of wear. Number one recommendation, I know it's an expensive recommendation, I do have another affiliate link down below, huh? but is get one of these bad boys right here. It is a JFJ Easy Pro Disc Cleaner. This thing works amazing. It has sandpaper down here, cleaning, all this cleaning stuff. It cleans the disc really well in there. Uh, there's no disc in there right now, but if it, if it's scratched up, that thing will make them look almost as good as new. I have a whole YouTube video on it. If you don't believe it, uh, just go to my YouTube channel, look up JFJ Easy Pro. Uh, it was only a few videos ago. You'll see I took scissors to the back of a video, uh, to a DVD. I scratched it up as hard as I could. I ran it through here a few times, and the thing worked. I was surprised. I did not think it was going to work. Um, but most things you find are not going to be that bad. I really went to town on it. This, usually one, one clean through, everything will work perfectly. Costs a little bit of money up front, but you never have to worry about buying things that are scratched again, so it pays for itself. Otherwise, if you don't want to spend the money up front, you can uh, just list them as untested, because there's no way you're going to test 98 games, right? It's going to take forever. Uh, so you can list them as untested, um, you know, varying wear, yada, yada but you're going to get way, way, way less money. This actually might pay for itself off of those 98 games alone and some. So I would do that. Um, and also, I mean, if you guys only find a couple games here and there, another great thing, bring it to a local used retro video game store. They usually have one of these and uh, something similar to this, and they will resurface a game for you for a buck or two. So you could spend two bucks or a dollar. I think it's I think it's closer to two dollars. You could spend two dollars to resurface your game every single time you need one. And it depends on how many you find. If you find 50 games a year, well then this thing was almost just paid for. And it saves you the gas, money, and the time to drive to a local store, have them buff it, all that stuff. I just recommend it. The thing works great. What's the best way to sell college textbooks? Amazon. You gotta do it on Amazon. Uh I've been doing Amazon FBA for three years now. I found my niche is video games. So what's your niche? That's Run BD3. Uh, mine's video games as well. I am extremely well versed in video games. I can pretty much go to a thrift store and not even look them up. I just do good, 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 and just grab them, right? And um, there's a lot that I don't know, obviously, because there are tens of thousands of video games, so it'd be impossible to know them all. But I, I know a lot of them. It is insane. I'd probably know a good 50% off the top of my head. It's just nuts. Uh, gross sales year to date. I'm not going to share that right now. I'd have to go into Amazon and I'm not doing that at the moment, but maybe in a future video. Uh, have I ever seen a celebrity in a thrift store? I have not. I've seen lots of celebrities around Connecticut though, but not in a thrift store. That would be actually, that would, that would be really cool. Couldn't find your eBay. Can you say it again? It's just the letter J D U period. J E S. Best way, best way to look it up. Uh, if you were in Miami Beach, Florida, where I live, what would be a great source to sell on eBay? So I was just in Miami Beach not too long ago, down in um, mid mid bay, mid beach. Is that what it is? Yeah, we were like right above South Beach, out there on the little um, what key. And uh, it was awesome, but I didn't see a single thrift store. But I do know there's this guy, Gerson, with a Facebook page called Thrifty World on Facebook that I'm a part of. He lives in Miami. He goes to uh, the bins. He goes to thrift stores. Mm -hmm. Try to join that Facebook group. It's called Thrifty World. Um, look it up on Facebook. 
contact him through there. Say that you're from the Miami area. Maybe he'll help you out. Uh, what up? What up? Sean Bouchard for the Canadian two dollars. Oh, that is interesting. Sean Bouchard uh, started watching for 3D movies in those bins. Oh yeah, 3D movies. That's actually interesting. I've never really thought about that, but I would imagine 3D kind of died out, right? So you would think it wouldn't be worth so much, but maybe because it's a dead format, dead format could be worth some good money. So good idea. I've never personally seen one though. Thank you, Sean Bouchard, for the super chat. Um. I'm uh, beginning, oh my gosh, this is hard to read. I am get being today on ebay.ca. I have eight listing. I'm being listing at 630. I'm sorry. I'm very hard to understand this question. Is that good for listing? I think you're trying to say is 630 a good time to list? Anytime is a good time to list. Do I have a backup plan if Amazon isn't good in five years? Yeah, so I have multiple backup plans. Uh, number one backup plan, YouTube. I love doing YouTube and I do make... Uh, a little bit of money on YouTube, so that helps. Uh, number two would be sticking to eBay, obviously. Uh, number three would be local sales. So I've I've actually been working on local sales because reselling is never going to die, guys. There's always going to be a place and an item to sell. It's just Amazon makes it easy right now, right? It makes it easier because I'm able to ship everything to the warehouse. If I couldn't do that in the future, I'd have to be a lot more selective with what I buy, which would make it a lot harder. But it, it's always going to be there. It would just be a lot harder. So if Amazon wasn't there, um, yeah, it'd be a lot tougher. But those are really my things. I mean, I would keep helping people on YouTube, keep talking about it, bringing you guys along, going to tag sales, things like that. Still entertainment quality stuff to get paid. Um, but then, you know, I'd still sell on eBay, still sell on all these other platforms. So that's really all I could think of at the moment uh, off the top of my head. How long was I doing reselling before I got the house? Uh, four or five years, so a while. Uh, Dana says, I shipped the wrong item on Amazon. The customer wants an exchange. I think we should do a return. Yes, do a return. Do a return. Always do a return. Just accept it. Get the money back. How long have I been reselling for? Almost five years. Uh, what is up, everybody? Would I sell a book as new if it has a black line from marker on the side where pages meet? No, I would not. If it was from a marker, no. Hi, Twitch School. I'm an Australian reseller. Always enjoy your videos, but this is the first time I've caught you live. Samson TV. What is up, dude? Thank you. Best tips for local selling, DD. Um, best tips for local selling, I don't know. Um, just try to find what's popular in your available area, right? Maybe furniture is super, you know. I, I sold a couple beds. Beds were moving fast here. Couches were moving fast here. So those were interesting. Uh, video games move fast kind of everywhere. Just try to find what your local market is and always always try to put things on more than one platform, okay, guys? Craigslist, not super popular right now. Don't just list on Craigslist and be like, oh, this isn't selling. List Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, offer up, let go, five miles, uh, whatever other ones there are. List on all of these. Cross post all of them. Okay. Do I get as many returns through Amazon or eBay? Um, more on Amazon. A lot more on Amazon, actually. Should I list my PS2 games separate, earn a lot for the most profit? Separate. Separate if you want the most profit. If you don't, if you want to sell them as a lot, uh, depends on the kind of games, right? If they're like old sports games, old games, not that good games, um, sell them as a lot. You'll average about a buck a game, uh, sometimes two bucks a game. If you, if, if they're worth some money, I mean, definitely sell them by themselves. If they're, you know, Super Smash Bros., if they're PS2 games, you know, Resident Evil, I'm trying to think of valuable PS2 games off the top of my head, I can't for some reason. Jurassic World Evolution, I don't know. I'm just coming up with random games. These games you'd want to sell separately. I'm going to be getting off here in about two minutes, guys, so I'm going to speed through these questions. Um, Mr. Sadie just wants them gone. If you just want them gone and you don't feel like cleaning them, list them as a lot untested. You're not, you're, I mean, if you have games that could sell for 15, 20 bucks a piece in there, expect to only get a couple bucks, maybe a buck or two a piece if you list them as untested in a big lot. You never know though. Uh, Vintage Discovery says, love getting paid for YouTube. Yeah, so do I. Yeah, it's awesome. Do I think Amazon eBay will merge or sell out to each other? I do not. Not, not at all. Not even close. Uh, do things you send to FBA have to be new? No, they can be new and used. Have I ever gotten to shoving match of the bins or out of thrift? Never. Okay. Does Amazon FBA cost any money to start? No, unless you want a professional account, and that'll save you money on fees. That's 30 bucks a month. 
Gabriel Ramirez, I always ask YouTubers, but none ever answer. Well, I'm about to. How do you handle eBay fees? Pay weekly, monthly, etc. I wonder because my fees have been getting up there to about three to four hundred each month. So actually, I don't know because I set this up a long time ago. We're talking five years ago. Mine come out, I think, every week or every couple sales. I don't know. They just come out all the time. I think like right after an item sells, after I ship it, after a week maybe, they just come out. So my eBay fees are usually never more than you know a couple hundred bucks and then they just go. So that's the way I do it. I would not let them go monthly. That's insane because then you just, if you get a big return and your fees all at the same time, you could be screwed. So I'd say every week, just keep the money flowing. Okay. What's the worst offer on eBay you have accepted? <laughs> that happens all the time, especially when I just want to move stuff. I mean, I've had things listed for $50 and then I'm running a 30% off sale. So they're already low. And then somebody offers me $15 on it. Maybe I spent 15 on it, and I'm like, man, I've had this listed for two years. Let's just get rid of it, and I get rid of it. And that happens, and I lose money on it, or I, or I break even on it. Happens all the time. Okay. Let's see. John and Pam. Yeah, you got to get to those 1,000 subs. You will get there if you post consistently, though. Um, all right, last question. Have I ever been to any good thrift stores on Long Island? Eric Ospina. Yes, uh, I have. Uh, I forgot the name of it, though, so that doesn't help. I went to a Goodwill. I went to one that we don't have here in Connecticut. Big one. It's like two floors. It was huge. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but there are some good ones in Long Island. I actually know a couple resellers in Long Island. Shout out to Ian Goldie. I don't think he's in here, but uh, yeah, there's actually some good ones out there. If someone had three thousand dollars worth of eBay items and picked up specifically to resell on eBay based on sold ended listings, where would be the best place um, bulk for a much lower price? Uh, to resell them in bulk for a much lower price, uh, go to a Plato's Closet. If they're good brands, that's where you're gonna sell a good amount of them. I assume for much lower profit. That's probably the best. Or list them locally, right? Say reseller bundle. I got all these stuff. They might be great for resellers. Two bucks a pop, right? Three bucks a pop, a buck a pop, and that would be the way to do it. Oh no, I'm never get, I'm never getting rid of this. So don't worry about that, um, guys. We do have 121 people in here. We max out at almost 150. Only have 34 likes though. So before I leave, I'd like you all to give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, of course. And um, those links to everything I mentioned, like the Scotty Peelers, this JFJ Easy Pro, my scales, all my stuff I use will be down below in the description once this video is fully uploaded the description will come all of that will come everything will be great hopefully you guys did enjoy this uh subscribe if you haven't already if this is your first time watching i'm trying to put out videos every single day and if i miss a couple days here and there it happens um i think the next video will be a ride along i think uh hopefully you guys enjoy that hopefully you guys have a good night until next time this is thrift school signing out see ya ah.